Hello everyone, I'm going to show you how to possibly repair your United Pacific 46129 train horns. So, a lot of people I've seen have been complaining about the quality of sound of these horns deteriorating over time, and I can possibly help you with that. So, here are some points of failure on this air horn. Inside these bells, there could be possibly debris clogging each of these bells. So what you can do to clean these bells out is you can unscrew them from each of the power chambers, obviously left to loosen them. And once you get them out, there are O-rings on each of these bells. You can take them to the hardware store and you can find the right sized O-ring. It's a thin O-ring, so make sure to request a thin O-ring to fit around these bells. Once you get those on, you can screw them in and also make sure to clean the threads and all that just so it's clean. Also, debris could clog the insides of the bells too, so that could be your problem. But make sure every time you take these bells off that you check if the O-rings are okay. Because if the O-rings are not okay, then you're going to have troubles with the bell sealing with the power chamber. Second off, it could be debris from your airlines clogging the inside of the horns up. Because even though debris from uh, road conditions can clog these bells up, you can have issues with your airline being dirty from your compressor and possibly clogging the entire manifold up. I have firsthand experienced that as taking off this fitting, you can see it gets dirty in here. And while that's necessarily not necessarily gonna cause you issues, it could cause you issues if it gets clogged enough in there and it starts causing problems with your diaphragms, which speaking of which, that's another problem. So to get these back caps off, what you'll need is a Phillips head screwdriver. So it's pretty simple. Just go ahead and loosen screws, all six of them per bell. Sometimes they can be a bit tight in place and sometimes they can be loose. So I'm going to show you me removing these. It's a bit hard to do on camera. Excuse the siren out there, and the local fire station's having the STL-10 go off now. So, basically, you just remove each of these screws. And, again, that screwdriver will assist you. These all take Phillips head screws. And just so you know, all of the hardware on these horns are metric size since these are produced overseas. So no, you're not gonna be able to uh, get the cheaper Imperial uh, hardware that you find on most air chime horns. So you got two more bolts. And here is the diaphragm. So as you can see, here's the back cap. This is what it looks like. And here's your diaphragm. Now the diaphragm, you'll need something sharp to get it off, like a knife or something. Please be careful not to cut yourself when getting these off. But this one's already been taken off and flipped because this is a bell that's had trouble sounding. So what you'll wanna do is you'll wanna find something sharp to get the diaphragms off. Now personally, since it's already able to come off. I'll just use this old Metro card I have lying around. There it is, there's your diaphragm. So you can see sometimes it can get chipped. In this case, mine is a little chipped, but it still works just fine. It's a bit warped, but what I did was once I was able to get it off, I used a spudger to get all the spare glue off, and then I just flipped it around and put it in the power chamber the other way, which helps it sound because having it flipped, sometimes it can get warped in one direction and it doesn't sit on the seat properly, but flipping it around can allow it to sit on the seat properly. So yeah, that's how you get the diaphragm out of the horn. And as you can see, if you want to, you can also clean the inside of the power chambers. Like I said, if your airline is dirty, it can cause problems with the inside of the power chambers getting dirty. So here's your air inlet, and here's the inside. See, it's all made of brass. Here's the glue the manufacturer put on. So yeah, that's the diaphragm. And let me focus, there we go. So basically, now that the diaphragm is off, 
either you, if your diaphragm is toast and it's completely destroyed, you, you obviously can throw it away. But there are some places I'll be linking in the description that you can get diaphragms. I'll warn you, some of them can be extremely overpriced. Like for example, Four State Trucks charges a whopping $18 for these thin metal discs. Don't pay that. I, I'll link some places. I'll link that too, just in case the others don't work. But try to find one for cheaper. I don't want to see you guys overpaying for what is essentially a fabricated thin metal disc. So usually I like to line it up with a little hole on the back cap right here. This is uh, from when it was manufactured. Looks like a casting hole. So you can sometimes see it on the back cap. This is the side that uh, sat in the back cap originally. So see, uh, this was how it, how it sat when I first uh, had it. But when I wanted to flip it around, you just simply flip it to the clean side and line up the screw holes with that. And I'm gonna put my phone down for a second so I can put this on without it getting in the way. So again, make sure it's lined up. And all you need to do is put in the back cap, just like that. And then you can just start threading in the screws, making sure that they're lining up with the holes in the diaphragm. Be very careful when handling these diaphragms is they are thin. They're not like Leslie RS diaphragms with the silicone on the outside, but you still want to be careful with them is they're really, they're really cheaply made. But if you take care of them, they shouldn't give you problems. All right, so there that is. There's the six screws. I thread the second one. You just need to thread it. There you go, we got two of the screws in now. So you can see we have our two screws in now. And just continue threading in all six of the screws when replacing your diaphragm. Just what I did here was I showed you the inside of the power chamber, took the diaphragm out, and I flipped it. But the diaphragm's in fine condition, and when you do reassemble the horn, the horn might sound a bit wheezy, it might sound a bit, uh, might sound a bit weird because, um, but once it starts, once it starts to break in again on the clean side, it should sound just fine. And if it doesn't sound just fine, you'll probably need a new diaphragm. But like I said, do anything you can to clean it as places like four state trucks charge way too much for what is essentially a thin metal disc. You could probably get an air chime K-Bell diaphragm for even cheaper than that. So yeah, don't overpay for any of that stuff. And again, get your screwdriver. and tighten them in a star pattern because that's how I prefer to do it. Doesn't need to be super tight, but just tight enough that it's just past hand tight as I call it. And this screw is not cooperating. So I'm going to need to, there we go. Now it's threading in. All right, and here's our final screw. So again, just put a screwdriver in. Make sure it's tight. And there it is. So that's basically just flipping a diaphragm in the back cap. Like I said, I already did the repair work, but I just wanted all of you to see in case your United Pacific 46129s have failed. Because I've seen a lot of YouTube comments of people saying that they love the sound of these horns but they haven't uh, been sounding great after a good while of use. Because a lot of the uh, people who mount these to their vehicles have them in spots that can be very vulnerable to road conditions. Now, one thing I have thought about doing with these horns is if you look at any Nathan Air Chime uh, train horn, just as this one right here, they're uh, on the railroad, they have debris covers that can fit over these. 
Uh, some of them can be nice ones that are made of metal. Some of them can just be dubbed shower caps and are just little mesh covers that go over the front of the bells to prevent foreign debris from going inside the bells. Now, from what I've seen, I the problem doesn't always lie with road conditions on trains because they're mounted on top of the locomotives. These are mounted under cars. And as you can see with winter conditions, with all that all that debris on the roads, it can be really harsh on these air horns. So either mounting them up in a spot which is less vulnerable, possibly facing them in different directions, like possibly facing them backwards could help. Though personally, I think most people would want them to face forward. So I don't think uh, that's always the way to go when it comes to that stuff. Facing them downwards, which is what most truckers do with these, to face them in a direction which allows the water and basically all foreign debris to hopefully drain out of this horn. But if someone is able to uh, find like a debris cover that could fit over each of these bells, that would actually be a great idea. I don't know who would be able to manufacture them, but similar to what you could find on these, a debris cover that could fit over these. Now, I don't know if it would work if the bells would sound proper even with the debris covers on because of how thin the diaphragms are. But that is just an idea to think about. But of course, one of the most important things to think about is, is your airline going to the horn clean? That's one of the most important things to think about. Plus also just generally maintaining the horns and making sure they don't get dirty after use. So your horns don't uh, foul and sound garbage. So yeah, that's pretty much all for the video. Uh, feel free to ask questions in the comment section. See you guys later.